So I'm gonna do a little tour of my new backyard. Uh, I just planted everything this year, so they're not too far along, but here's kind of an overview of the yard. So we'll kind of go over there and around past there, over that corner. So first plant is this Truhosine mulberry, I think it is. It's actually a, it's not a mulberry, it's a nettle relative. Um, it is probably gonna die to the roots here depending on how cold it gets in the winter. So we'll see if I ever actually get fruit off of it, but it seemed like an interesting one. Uh, next to it, we have some thimble berries. So they're kind of like a raspberry, but they have these maple shaped leaves and the flowers on them get much larger. These are really common in the Northwest of the United States. And you can kind of see some berries starting right there. So they are blooming and starting to get ready to ride in here. It's kind of a flower bud. Um, room's open right now to show you. And then next we have a plant that's kind of hard to see. Well, I also have Tegan over there supervising. But we have a plant that's kind of hard to see right now because the leaves have died back. Uh, but these are ramps. So they're a little bit interesting because they, uh, the leaves come up really early in the spring and then they die back. And then after the leaves are gone, they flower. So those flowers will probably open in another week or two. Uh, next we have a plant called Mayapple. So it gets these kind of fun umbrella shaped leaves. And then as they get more mature, they'll get a small flower underneath the leaves and it'll get a little yellowish fruit. Uh, next one is wood sorrel. So it's kind of a shamrock type leaves when they're open. Uh, they're closed right now. It's getting into evening and it's been pretty hot and it's gonna get hotter. But it's supposed to be hardy here, but I'm not sure how it's going to handle the heat. It's supposed to be 100, <laughs> um, basically in a few days. So we'll see how that goes. Um, next we have another little start, a couple of starts over here that are doing okay. They were very small plants when I got them, but almost no roots. But they will hopefully survive the summer. If they do that, then I think they'll be fine. Uh, these are yoga ginger. So it is a ginger plant, but it, you don't use the root on it. It's uh, kind of a Japanese herb and you use little flowers that grow up from the base of the plant. Um, in this area, you can't see them at all. But there's, I planted some ramsons. So they're a close relative to ramps, but they're the European species. And they'll actually flower when the leaves are still up. Um, next we have one that I've just recently planted. This is Formosan raspberry. So it is a kind of a carpet ground cover raspberry. So it only gets maybe a foot tall. And spreads out. It's supposed to get little yellow berries that are okay. Maybe not the best tasting thing in the world, but we'll see. And I have a little pawpaw seedling that I got from somebody local. So this is from a local tree that bore fruit and then somebody local planted the seeds from that fruit and was able to get some to grow. So a little seedling, probably gonna have to protect it at least this winter. Uh, next we have one that I'm kind of losing hope in it leafing out. So this is a blue bean tree. Um, yeah, it's kind of, the fruit looks kind of like a kevia, but it's a woody plant instead of a vine. So if this one doesn't leaf out, I'll probably try again. 
uh, next year. We've got some blue elderberry. So blue elderberry is native to this area, but up in the mountains. I couldn't find a reliable source of local fruit, fruiting plants, like from our local mountains. So these actually came in from California, but I was able to get a few seeds that I collected from uh, fruit last fall to germinate. So got those started inside. I'll probably move them out pretty soon or maybe in the fall, I'm not sure. This is Sweet Sicily. And it too is adjusting to the heat. <laughs> um, so some of the older leaves have wilted, but the new ones are coming up and they look pretty good. This is kind of a, use more as an herb, but you can eat the seed pods and they're supposed to taste kind of like uh, good and plenty of candy. Uh, we'll see, I haven't tried that one yet. And over here we have a new one that I just got. Uh, this is called Skirret. So it used to be a very popular root crop in Europe that's kind of fallen out of favor since potatoes were introduced. Um, it's supposed to taste kind of like a combination of carrots and potatoes. And next we have some Northline Service Berry. So these are pretty young, you can see, but it's supposed to be one of the best uh, eating service berries. So we'll see, and uh, I might get a few fruit next year. We'll see. Probably not till it really into the year after that. And we have my first fruit tree. So this was a stick when I planted it this spring. So all of these branches are new growth. That's probably almost 18 inches already this year. So hopefully it's gonna do pretty well. Harkot apricot. Um, next we have a sugar twist pluary, which the leaves have been kind of eaten ragged on it. We've had a lot of wind this spring too, which has been a little rough on the new transplants. But it's doing well. This one is supposed to ripen fairly early, so earlier than the other pluaries and pluots that I have. Uh, next we have another one of them that I'm losing hope on. So this is green gauge plum. It's still green under the bark when I scratch it, but no leaves and it's, like I said, it's been really hot, so we'll see. And over here, um, this is a Titan sea berry, and then a male over here. I had a third one, but it didn't make it. Um, so we're gonna have to replace that guy. Uh, and next we have a little Bartlett pear. So, I mean, this is your normal grocery store kind of pear. Um, and then over here we have a baby Shapova, which is a pear mountain ash cross. And it's doing very well. It's supposed to be a pretty small tree, maybe six feet high as a maximum. So hopefully that'll work out. Um, oh, and then this plant here uh, and that one, those are Baptisia. I've got a lot of them throughout the yard. They're not edible, but they're a native uh, nitrogen fixing plant. They have flowers that look kind of like lupins in the spring. Over here we have some tune. So I actually got these from an Etsy seller and I ordered one tree and he sent two. And they looked terrible when I first got them but they've been leafing out and doing pretty well. I did test one of the leaves and they definitely taste like onions but they have a little something else too. So it'll be interesting to see how those do. And then this little tree here is an Imshu heart nut. So heart nuts are basically walnuts, but their uh, nuts look like little hearts kind of. 
Um, so should be pretty interesting. They're supposed to, be to have a really good taste. Uh, over here, got a couple little spice bushes. Um, this is probably not a good spot for them right now because it's really hot here uh, with the white fence right there and facing west. So we'll see if they make it through the year. If not, I'll get some more and plant them in a place that's a little bit cooler. Um, this is a Mitchell Dwart nut. I'll try saying that five times fast. So this is a heart nut butternut cross. Um, again, just kinds of walnuts. And then we have some witch hazel over here. Seem to be doing all right in spite of the heat. And then we have the last of my walnuts, the Simcoe heart nut. And then over here we have another one that's <laughs> giving me a heart attack. It's a Claps favorite pair. Again, no leaves yet, so. Really, we'll see. Uh, there's a Szechuan pepper, and then there's a male in the back. So you need two of those guys. And then all throughout this area, I have like lots of different echinaceas and rubecchias, and uh, got a bunch of blanket flower and some daisies. A bunch of bee balm and some lupins. And those are, it's mostly just for the pollinators. I also have like some uh, milkweed here in the back. Hopefully help out the butterflies a little bit too. So it's mostly for pollinators, but also um, provides some benefits. So like Echinacea and Rudbeckia, you can use as an herb and as a medicinal herb you can also eat some parts of them uh, daisies you can eat most of the plants uh, lupins are nitrogen fixers uh, bee balm is an herb you can use uh, another one that i have is some agastache also called uh, hummingbird mint so again just a pollinator one though it can be used as an herb sometimes it has kind of a licorice and flavor. Uh, so in, in between all the pollinator garden I have a bunch of trees so this is a Nikita's pride almond and then over here we have a bounty almond so this should be soft shell sweet almonds that are hardy here and they're supposed to do pretty well with um, late freezes which are common at our altitude. Um, and we have the last one that I'm still hoping for, but getting losing hope is a Shanks Lee Jujubi, I think. And then over here we have a Black Sea Jujube, which is all leafed out and looking all right. I just need to straighten it up a little bit. And we also have some other flowers as we get into a little bit of a shadier spot. So we have some clustered bell flower, which the flowers are edible. You can see some of them in the back here. We have a Jefferson hazelnut. And then in the very back corner, it is a theta hazelnut. In this corner, have some uh, sea kale that I started from some root um, root cuttings. It was actually surprisingly easy. Like 99% of them took and they're sending up leaves and everything. So it kind of surprised me how successful that was. So from one plant, I have like six here, six or seven here, and I gave away probably 10 or 15 just from one plant that I pulled up this spring. So that's fun. Um, asparagus, just planted some crowns. I got 25 crowns. Um, almost all of them came up. I think I lost 
one. And I have a couple that are a little bit slow, but they'll probably make it. And in here we have artichokes. And then in this corner over here, there's some yacon. This is a root crop with kind of like daisy-like flowers. I guess it's probably pretty similar to um, uh, Jerusalem artichoke, but from a different region and a little bit different growth characteristics, but kind of similar in terms of growth patterns. Um, there's some annuals, like some, there's a melon back there, and these are some sunflowers, some beans over there, and then some daylilies here. Just little this year, they'll probably be a lot bigger next year. So you can eat the flowers on those and the tubers. I suppose some people say you can eat the leaves, but I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> and we have some um, Oregon stone crop here, which is edible. And then as we start moving in towards the middle of the yard, got some grapes on these arbors. So this is a hemrod grape, so it's a green one. Hopefully it'll grow up and cover that arbor eventually. We have some snowbank blackberries. So these are a white blackberry. Um, never grown them before, never even heard of them before this last winter, but we'll see how they do. We have a dwarf strawberry tree here. Just put in the ground like a week ago. It seems to be doing fine. Doesn't mind the sun or the heat. Um, it was supposed to be an einset grape, but it never leafed out. So that was kind of disappointing. That was the one I was looking forward to the most. And then down here we have some pine berries. So that's a white strawberry. And then a joy grape. So that's a purple or black grape. We have a a Tasmanian mountain pepper and it does not seem to like the sun. At least not as intense as it is here. I'm hoping it will survive. It's putting out a lot of new leaves. Um, we'll see if it doesn't. I will probably try one more time and put it in somewhere that gets some afternoon shade. And then this is a flying dragon trifoliate orange. Seems to be mostly uh, branches and thorns right now. We'll see if it gets any significant leaves or not. Um, we have some horseradish here. Uh, and then, so, going to be a cardinal persimmon here, but it didn't make it either. Had kind of bad luck this year with trees. I usually I think this is the first year I've really lost any that I've gotten bare root, so it's been a little bit frustrating. Um, then we have an, a lemon Alberta peach tree. Uh, this is a hardy pomegranate. I'll put the variety in the description and as a title on the screen because I can't remember right now. A, and a Red Haven, Haven Peach. That's pretty much what I planted this year. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, can't wait for things to grow in a little bit more. And we'll see how this turns out. Alright, bye.